I don't believe I'm poking anyone in the eye. Uh, there is a serious threat uh, that exists in the world. And the president uh, last night uh, kind of papered over it. House Speaker John Boehner announcing his decision to invite Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu to address Congress in March without notifying the White House. And it's time now for our Sunday group. Syndicated columnist George Will, Ron Fournier of the National Journal, Fox News contributor Liz Cheney, and Charles Lane from the Washington Post. George, was Boehner wrong to invite Netanyahu to Congress without consulting the White House? Was Netanyahu wrong to accept the invitation? Neither were wrong. Uh, Congress is a co-equal branch of government with many responsibilities in foreign policy. Second, the president has gone out of his way to show disdain for both Congress in foreign and domestic policy, and for Mr. Netanyahu in particular. Now, Steve Hayes, Fox News contributor, makes the point in the Weekly Standard today that uh, it is by no means good protocol to have the prime minister of another country, Mr. Cameron, lobby our Congress about policies he favors. Yeah, we, let, let me just quickly point out, Cameron called members of Congress to say, don't pass a sanctions bill, it, it, threatening sanctions against Iran. Correct. Uh, the president's people were apologizing to members of Congress this week for not consulting them on Congress. We may be sure that if a deal is reached with Iran by June 30th, and if a climate deal is reached in Paris, the president will try to treat both of those as something other than a treaty and go around Congress. Israel lives in a tough neighborhood. 726 days the president will be gone. They will still live in a tough neighborhood. And they're not going to worry about showing manners to this man who has such bad manners. We asked you for questions for the panel, and we got mixed reactions on this subject from, from you. Uh, D. McWilliams writes on Facebook, Boehner doesn't have to ask Obama who he can invite to speak at the House. Does Obama ask Boehner who he can invite to the White House? But Tamara Hyland sent this, Bibi accepted, that's Netanyahu, Bibi accepted the invitation. Isn't that kind of a slap in the face for Obama? Ron, where do you come down on this? I think George is right. Constitutionally, everybody's acting within the right parameters. But politically, if you're not looking at this through your, one of your ideological prisms on the right or left, if you're just an average American out there, just kind of uh, plugging into this, you're asking yourself, first of all, why is the House Speaker embarrassing the Commander-in-Chief? Why is the president refusing to meet and snubbing the Israeli prime minister? And why is Netanyahu mucking around at American politics? I think politically, uh, everyone here needs to realize that we're all kind of on the same side. And the, the, the common enemy here is, the, is, is Iran and the potential of them getting a nuclear weapon. And we can disagree on how we go about doing it, but we shouldn't be playing petty political games along the way. You know, Liz, I, I was thinking this week when President Bush and your dad were in the White House. If Nancy Pelosi had invited a foreign leader to come address Congress to basically criticize Bush's policy on an issue, wouldn't the guys in that White House have hit the roof? You know, I think that um, one of the things that um, they believed, that I believe strongly, is in the importance of a powerful uh, executive. And part of the challenge we've got here is we don't have a powerful executive. And at the bottom of this whole debate and argument is the substance of the policy. You know, the president stood in front of the Congress in his State of the Union address and said that we've halted Iran's progress towards a nuclear weapon, which is just absolutely nonsense. And uh, you have a situation where the White House is pushing very hard for this deal with the Iranians. Each time the Iranians fail to meet their obligations, the White House extends a deadline again. A week before the president's State of the Union address, the Iranians announced they're going to build two new reactors. The IAEA says that they've been feeding uranium hexafluoride gas into the uh, centrifuges at Natanz that they were supposed to shut down. So, yes, there's this political debate going on. I think Boehner was absolutely right to invite Netanyahu. I think Netanyahu was absolutely right to accept. But we've got to remember this at bottom is about a very grave, dire, and growing imminent threat that the United States and Israel face from a nuclear armed Iran. I'll answer question. The vice president would have accused Democrats of being unpatriotic if they invited the French president in 1993 to eat freedom fries on Capitol Hill. Well, in 93, that was Al Gore. Two, two, <laughs> 2003, yeah. 2003. But anyway, well, okay. <laughs> Chuck, let, let's, let's take the, a look at the bigger picture that, that Liz was talking about, because this is, there's a lot of news out of the Middle East this week. Our strongest a Arab ally in the Middle East, the Saudi king, has died. The, the government of Yemen, which was helping us fight al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, AQAP, that government has collapsed. ISIS is continuing its murderous ways, and yet 
in his State of the Union address, when the president was talking not only about domestic policy, but also foreign policy, he said, we need to talk about turning the page. The shadow of crisis has passed. I guess my, and I thought it as I heard him, what's he talking about? Well, on um, the foreign side, what, what looks like happening right now in the Middle East is a kind of broad Iranian push on a number of fronts. The uh, southern Iraq, where they're essentially behind the government there and their own troops are fighting in Iraq against ISIS. Yemen, the re rebellion there is backed by Iran, etc. They're doing all this under the umbrella of their nuclear program. And there is a sort of archipelago of influence, if not an empire, that they're trying to build in the Middle East. And so the idea that the shadow of crisis has passed is, we haven't even talked about Russia, by the way, where the president said in the State of the Union that Vladimir Putin is isolated and his economy in tatters, and Putin's answer to that was to launch a new offensive in Ukraine. So I think maybe the shadow had passed kind of momentarily, and the president mistook that for something permanent. Uh, let me ask that you moment. About, <laughs> about that, Liz. I mean, what your thought? I mean, it, what, he wasn't, forgive me, saying mission accomplished, but he was sort of declaring an interim victory when he talked about the shadow of crisis has passed in the war on terror. Look, this is just more of what we've seen from this president, which is frankly very hard to understand. Again and again and again, the president seems to think that if he says something, it will make it so. We have now got Iran with. Uh, if not control, major influence over four capitals in the Arab world, Sana'a, Baghdad, Damascus, and possibly Beirut as well. Um, at the same time, they're on their way to a, a nuclear weapon. We've got ISIS having spread its influence across the region, Al-Qaeda having spread and grown in threat. The notion that the president will say to the American people, somehow the threat has passed, and, and think that we all are naive enough to say, okay, that's great, we feel good about it, is frankly uh, terrifying, given the threat that we face. I agree. Uh, this is the equivalent of saying mission accomplished. And it is irresponsible and wrong, and it's part of the pattern of the White House thinking that all they have to do is get past one, uh, one cycle, one media cycle, and not worry about the future well, this, this is it, not it communicates a little Sorry. complacency, too. It communicates Definitely. a little yeah. complacency that people like Putin react to and take advantage of. All right. We have to take a break here. We'll see you a little bit later.